Hey, what's up guys? So if you just bought a monochrome camera, such as this one here, and you're not really sure how to combine those channels to make a color image, I'm going to show you really quickly how to do it on Pixinsight. It's really simple and it's really quick. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So this video is going to be about the Hubble palette and uh, I'll make a new video uh, which is going to be very similar, but it's going to be about the uh, bicolor um, combination. But first I want to thank um, Kron Merciesa again because this website is what taught me everything about Pixinsight pretty much. And uh, you can find, the, like, what I'm going to show you right now is pretty much the same as his article here. It's, it's, there's so much detail in there, so much technical data, which kind of is um, confusing if you're a beginner. So that's why I'm going to ignore all the technical data and stuff. I'm going to make it very simple and very easy and uh, straight to the point. But um, yeah, go, I suggest you go check him out. And um, there's so many different tutorials on, the, on there about Pixinsight that are amazing. Anyway, so we have Pixinsight here. The first thing I've done is a batch pre-processing, which is just like usual. And um, I just add the files um, by channel. So today we're going to be doing the Hubble palette. So I added all the HA03 and S2 files to the batch pre-processing, as well as darks and uh, stack them together. So once you're done with the, the stacking, you just open the, the master for each. So here we have the master for HA, the master for S2, and the master for 3 So we're going to quickly um, do an STF on them, uh, stretch them to see what they look like. So here is about one hour on, uh, on the bubble nebula doing uh, O3. Here is the same amount of time with the uh, S2 filter. And now for the HA, it's going to be much more impressive. Here is also one hour, but with the, uh, the HA filter. So, we have our three images here. Now the goal is to combine them, right? So, the first thing to do is to uh, make sure the crop is the same on them. Because if you notice on, on the images, some of like a dark line, like you know, the edge is like dark here, that's wrong because you know this one doesn't have it. So we want to make sure that this, the cropping is the same for all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, um, make a, a square here to crop and make sure that I take the uh, the black out and now you're going to apply this process to the two other images first before you apply it to the, the one you used. Now select the one you used and accept. Now you can close that, we're done with that. Now we only have three slash four or five uh, processes to go through. So the next one will be masked stretch. This is to make our files non-linear. So what's going to, to happen here is we want to make a, a small preview on a background which has no star. So find a place where it's like all dark with no stars like this one for example and then just make a small preview on it and then clone this preview by sliding it to the other two images. So they all have the same the same preview on each. And once we have that we want to make sure that the STF is is off because we're going to to stretch these into nonlinear. So now the STF is useless. We can just turn that off. And with the mass stretch, we're going to apply it to each image with their with their own um, preview. So for example, for the HA preview, I'm going to slide this to the HA image. There we go. Now same for the what we have S2. The next yes S2 preview on the S2 file and lastly I'm going to do the same for the uh, O3 file. There we go. And now we have our images in non-linear so I can turn that off too and I'm going to get rid of all those previews which are now useless. Okay preview delete preview delete and now we have two main processes to do. Um, linear fit is going to make sure that the background for each image match. So the reference file I'm going to use the HA, which is you know has a, it has a more data. So I'm going to use the HA file here, and I'm going to apply this to the S2 and to the O3 file. This will ensure that the S2 and the O3 file 
have the same background uh, brightness as the uh, the HA file. So when we combine them, it's not you know weird. And as you can see, it's really fast. It takes like what five seconds, not even. Just turn that off, and now we're almost done. We have all we have to do left is to combine them. So I'm going to minimize those guys. You don't have to, but I just like to minimize them since we won't be using them anymore. And since we're trying to do the Hubble palette right now, um, the Hubble palette is going to be S2 for red, HA for green, and O3 for blue. So I'm going to add uh, red is going to be S2, green HA, and blue is going to be O3. Okay, and now just apply it globally. And it's going to create a new image, as you can see here. And as you can see, you know, it's very, very green, which is actually normal. The green is because of the HA, you know, there is so much HA in there. And since we picked green, um, it's really like all over the place. So the last thing you have to do before you start processing your image as, as usual is to do an SCNR. Now, you can either do it right away, you know, 100%, just to see how it looks. Oh, nice. Like, you know, there's blues and, and orange, which is really nice. Or you can play around with the amount here and, you know, maybe do 60% or 80%, up to you. It's, it's all about, you know, what you prefer. Or if you don't want to, if you don't like how, it has, how this looks at all, you can open up the, the curve transformation and if you go to the hue tab, which is the H tab here, you can play around with that. As long as you, you know that you're going to apply SCNR later as well. So just if you want to play around with that a bit, so it's less, uh, you know, the colors are more, you know, popping or more, more towards the orange or up to you, uh, you can play with that. It's kind of difficult to, to tell because you know you're going to take off the green later, but um, let's just pretend here, let's just do that for now. And uh, so let's pretend we're doing this. Uh, let me see, I want some more blues in there. Hmm. Okay, I like that actually. And uh, apply it there. And then take off the green using a CNR. And this might look different. See, it says much more orange in there. So, depending on what you prefer, you can play around with those two uh, processes until you are satisfied. So, I'm pretty happy with actually using... Uh, the whole SCNR without the uh, the curves. So I'm going to do that today and I'm going to show you guys what my final image is right now. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's only three hours, so yeah. So I hope this will help you um, combine images if you're new to monochrome imaging. It's not that hard, it's really easy, just three or four processes, that's it. And um, yeah, so I'll do the same video for bicolor imaging, which I just tried and it's actually pretty nice. I had some trouble finding how to do it too, but um, now that I know, I would like to share it with you. So yeah, I will do the same for bicolor now. And um, I'll see you next time. Cheers guys.